Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President and CEO, Booking Holdings, Glenn Fogel, in discussion with Skift Executive Editor, Founding Editor, Dennis Schall. Glenn, thanks for being here. Newsflash, cocktails right after this, but consider this an hors d'oeuvre. What do you? I think they prefer the drink. Uh, could be. So, um, oh, please uh, don't forget to put your questions into the app uh, so I could ask, we could ask Glenn some questions from the audience at the end. So we're going to talk about the future of travel and booking holdings role in it. But first, um, you know, some immediate matters at hand. Uh, Glenn, you became CEO of the parent company in 2017. And a few months ago, you made some executive changes, and you took on the additional role of CEO of Booking.com. So um, what was behind that? Why step in? Yeah, it was a change we made uh, July 1. And one of the things that we've been talking about is building a company that is more closely aligned among all the different brands that we have. You know, Booking.com is by far the biggest, but I'm sure many of you are aware we have a bunch of other brands that are very powerful too. We have Priceline, of course, the one that started it all. We have Kayak, we have Open Table, we have Agoda, we have rentalcars.com and a bunch of others. And my belief is that it's important to try and bring them together and have all the companies benefit from each other's strengths. Now, my role as CEO of the holding company started in uh, beginning of January 2017, but I've been with the company since 2000, so almost 20 years is coming to be a, you know, my tenure there. And one of the benefits I've had is being able to know all the companies very well because I was the M&A specialist who brought them all in. So I've known the management there. I know what the strengths are there. I know what we need to do to bring everything together. So I thought by becoming the CEO of our largest company, Booking.com, and helping to bring it all together, it'll be easier to make that happen. And that's why I did it. In that regard about uh, bringing the brands together, I understand you, um, you're doing a pilot in London. I think it's a pilot. Uh, food.booking.com, so some kind of integration of booking.com and open table. Can you talk about that? Sure, 1,800 restaurants in London. Um, other cities will be rolling out soon. Look, the idea is, and I've joked about this an awful lot, and one of the reasons we bought Open Table is 100% of the people who are traveling do not eat at home, thereby, Open Table, a good thing to have. When you go to London, I want to be able to offer up to our travelers great opportunities to eat at great restaurants or average restaurants for all that matter in London and make it easy, seamless, frictionless. You know, right now, it's you go right now, you go to London and you want to use Open Table, and we already have you having booked using booking.com in a hotel. There's really no relationship. We're not offering you specials or great restaurants right near the hotel where you are, which we know you are. We haven't gotten all the restaurant tours to get onto our platform so they can offer and merchandise things to you to make you go to those restaurants. It's something that seems fairly obvious, and this is one of the things I want to drive together. Right. Um, in, your, in your second quarter earnings calls, call, you did mention that one of the reasons that you made the change was because um, you weren't exactly satisfied with the pace of ex execution, not necessarily at Booking.com, but across the whole company. Um, can you give any examples of that? You know, one thing I think of is um, Booking.com's entry into the U.S. Um, are you somewhat frustrated with that in terms of... Um, the traction could be a lot faster? So you'd like to know how unhappy and frustrated I am. <laughs> um, now look, I am a competitive person, mm -hmm. and I always want to do things better, faster. Uh, there's urgency, okay? So we talk about this connected trip an awful lot nowadays, but the fact is we're not the only ones thinking about this. There are a lot of very good competitors in the space who are also thinking the exact same way because it is the right thing to build because it is a better solution for travel. Therefore, I believe that urgency, speed, wins. What wasn't fast enough, though? Every single day, I walk in, and I see something that can be improved upon. And I'll bet you do, too. When you go to travel, whether it's one of our sites or any site, or you're just while you're traveling, you see things and say, boy, why is it that way? It should be another way. This would be so much easier if it was done that way. These are things that every day I want to make sure that we are working on it right away to get it as fixed as fast as possible so we will build a better solution for everybody. Let's go to the slide, please. So, Glenn, you mentioned the connected trip, 
And one uh, big project you guys have going on is building a new payment system for all these different kind of cu currencies around the world. One of them I mentioned to you, uh, is it Paytm? How do you pronounce it? Paytm. Paytm, uh, I'd never heard of. It's, a, it's an Indian uh, currency or payment system. Um, so why is that so important and how does this all fit into where travel is headed? So that's one of the things I get asked questions about a lot. And it's the question though is almost invariably for somebody who lives in America. Is I don't get it. You know, you just put your credit card in, what's the, what's the issue? And they don't recognize that in a lot of places around the world, people don't have that credit card. They want to buy online, they have their own way to do it. And if anybody is not offering the way to pay that the customer wants, they're going to choose somebody else's site because they're going to go to the one that allows them to pay the way they want to. So you have just a few here, I don't know what, nine, 10 here, okay? Agoda, our, uh, one of our companies, Agoda, they have over 40 ways a customer can pay. Now the hotelier does not want to set up 40 ways to accept payment, they'd like to have one way or two ways and you know, they'll tell us exactly how they like to get paid. Now the thing is, if we don't provide that way for all these customers, whether it be Paytm or if you're in Kenya and you want to do M-Pesa, I can go through 40 and by the way, that's just a fraction of the ways to pay. I was talking with an online retailer a few months ago, it was European, I think it's clothing. They have over 100 ways people can pay around the world. It's complex, it's not easy. There are a lot of regulations you have to deal with in certain parts of the world. And that sort of stuff is complex. One of the benefits of our group is size. Bigger really is better. So we can scale the costs of all these payment systems across a much larger base. So it's a good thing that we're doing for our hotel partners, providing easier, something they couldn't do on their own at a much lower cost, even if they could do it, is providing a great thing for our customers who want to pay in a certain way. And for us, it's a good thing because we're going to produce more business. Speaking of ways to pay, you recently became uh, a founding member of the Facebook-inspired uh, uh, cryptocurrency Libra. I think they like to call it as an alternative payment method last time I checked. <laughs> uh, it's called Libra. Um, I look at it, tell me if I'm right or wrong. You're going to tell me I'm wrong. As the establishment's cryptocurrency, uh, Visa's. Alternative payment method, go on. Uh, <laughs> Bitcoin substitute. Um, alternative payment method. <laughs> anyway. Give me, give me an update. I mean, Visa's involved, MasterCard's involved, yep. PayPal. So um, what's new since the announcement? When are we going to see this, and how is it going to be used? The uh, answer is nobody knows. Look, we were invited by Facebook to participate, be one of the founding members of it, and we looked at what they were talking about, what they were thinking, and we said, yeah, we'd like to have a seat at the table as this develops. We don't know whether it's going to come off the ground or not. We do know, though, that there's the possibility that it will produce something that is much more efficient for everybody involved. That's a possibility. We want to be there for that because when you think about the cost of payments and the way transferring money is around the world, there's still substantial cost in that. And everybody who here has to pay interchange fees to a credit card knows what I'm talking about completely. And then you have to deal with the fraud issues. If you have to absorb those fraud costs, you know what that is too. So if there's a way that is cheaper, quicker, just so much better, You'd want to be part of it. Now, who knows how it's going to come out. There's certainly a great deal of interest in this by all the major regulators around the world. Governments are very interested in this, and we welcome that. Look, I don't want to participate in something that if it is not safe and secure, and privacy is made sure that everybody is able to feel secure in this, I don't want to be part of it. But I do believe that what, we're, what is being what the people who have developed this and are trying to bring forward is something that will accomplish all these goals. And as long as the government regulators do an appropriate way to look at it and make sure it is safe and make sure it works well, I'm all for it. And if we decide, if it doesn't get off the ground, well, look, we've always been an innovative company. We've always thought that experimentation is the way to do things. So we want to get in there, see what works, what could work, what won't work. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know if we don't try, I know it definitely won't happen. Were there any misgivings about the fact that it's Facebook that's the uh, driving force behind this? They don't exactly have the best reputation these days in terms of uh, protecting user privacy. Well, as I believe you know, because you probably read the, the entire white paper of the, uh, of the uh, alternative uh, payment method, Crypto. that, uh, yeah, that it, um, <laughs> it actually, while Facebook has 
uh, obviously brought forward a lot of effort to make it happen. This is going to be an independent trust that is situated in Switzerland, and it is not Facebook's thing. It is an independent thing. I think that's very important to uh, try and make the differentiation between the two. It's not the Facebook. Um, in leading up to the forum... <laughs> I got it, but I don't think anybody else... I know. <laughs> Showing my age again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, leading up to the forum, um, you know, one of the, one of the uh, themes of this forum is travel's responsibility to the world. Leading up to the forum, I asked you about over-tourism, and you gave me the politically incorrect, incorrect answer. It's not our job to tell travelers where to go. Why not? Well, again, I can call... <laughs> call me politically incorrect, but I still don't think it's my duty to tell people where they should go. That being said, I am all in favor of incentivizing, encouraging, doing things that are appropriate to help people experience the entire world, not just a little piece of it. And giving, and one of the great things about our platform is that we allow people from anywhere in the world to come on and help try and get customers to come to their part of the world, because there are a lot of parts of the world that are not getting a lot of tourists, and it'd be great, because they're wonderful places to go, et cetera. Look, over-tourism is a serious problem, and I think many of us know that because we've been traveling last summer, and we've been in some of these cities, and it's not enjoyable. So all the reason we went there is kind of ruined if it's too crowded or too many people. And that's for us, the travelers. Imagine the people who have to live there every day. They got to deal with this. Um, you know, our main headquarters for Booking.com is in Amsterdam, and I'll tell you, in the summer in Amsterdam, it's, uh, it's had some issues. You got some things you got to be careful about walking the street. We believe that there needs to be some solutions to this, but it can't be just done by one single company saying, okay, we're gonna limit ourselves to how many people we're gonna send to Paris. That is not what the company should be doing. What we need is everybody, all parts of the ecosystem, and importantly, the regulators. It's really the government's duty to set up what the ground rules are so we can all have a fair way to play and make sure the people who live there still are able to enjoy their lives. Let's talk about a subject near and not so dear to everyone's heart. Well, dear to some people's hearts, resort fees. Uh, so for people don't, that don't know, hot hotels, it used to be you know, mostly a Las Vegas thing, but now it's really spread. Uh, it's New York City, it's Miami, it's, it is Las Vegas. It's, it's in other parts of the world where um, hotels are putting their, their rates out there and not necessarily disclosing up front, um, oh, by the way, you have a daily resort fee mandatory uh, to pay. So Booking, Booking Holdings uh, took the step recently to start charging hotels commissions on those resort fees. Uh, Why did you do it, and what's been the reaction? All right, so and the way you described it is correct. And one of the things we think is a very bad customer experience is you go to buy something, you think what the price is because it tells you the price up front, you go all the way through all the effort to buy it. And then at the very end, when you're just ready to finish off the transaction, you find out there, oh, there's one more charge. And it's mandatory. You don't get a choice. And by what are you getting for it? You're getting for what you thought you were paying for up front for the most part. Now, that's one of the things we always differentiate ourselves from Airbnb. Because when we do our home business, our you know, alternative homes business, we always make sure it's the all-inclusive, the price you're going to pay is up front, whereas Airbnb is putting you in the back with that uh, fee at the end, the traveler fee. And we thought that was a terrible way. The hotel thing is a very similar issue, where at the end of the thing, you end up with that extra fee. That's not right. So we think transparency is the way to do it. And one of the ways we're going to try and help make that happen is saying, uh, Ms. Hotel General Manager, we don't think it right that you will say, I'm going to pay a commission only on the portion part on the front. But if we separate, segment out part of that fee to this thing called a resort fee, we won't have to pay you anymore. And it's unfair to the hoteliers who don't do that. So just to the simple example, you got two hotels. One, everything up front, $100 is the ADR. That's the price. And they pay the commission on the 100 to us, and it's all fine and good. And this other hotel says, hmm, 80 and then 20 at the end, and we'll only have to pay the commission on the 80. That's wrong. That's not a fair train, uh, playing field, and we don't like that. And by the way, it's not just, forget about just commissions to people like us. Think about the local communities that have the occupancy tax that helps pay for a lot of services in that town. Those occupancy taxes, many times, the law was set up only for the occupancy tax, meaning the rate. Thereby, a hotel, if they set up occupancy, oh, we'll have to pay that on the part up front, we want to pay on the resort fee. 
you know, you end up with these ridiculous amounts. Some of these resort fees are like, you know, they're getting close to what the ADR is. Just wrong. Uh, you're sort of out on a limb there on that, though, because um, Expedia didn't follow. They're not going to charge the commissions on the resort fees. Um, I know there were some hotels that at least temporarily dropped out of Booking.com when they, when they heard about your new policy. It hasn't been implemented in the U.S. yet, right? So uh, how does it feel being out on a limb, Glenn? Well, I think it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. A. Number one, it is absolutely the right thing to do, too. It's not like we're trying to get more money from the hoteliers. Let me get that one straight, too. If any hotel wants to have a discussion about how much the appropriate total payment and commission should be, we are always open to that. We always are negotiating those prices. This deals more with the, just a fundamental fairness of how you treat a customer in terms of what you're telling them, how much it's going to cost, and not hitting somebody at the backside when they don't even know until the How many times have you shown up at the desk and found out, oh my God, there's an extra $30 a day, and I'm there for five days, $150 on this r mandatory resort fee at a place that doesn't even have a pool? <laughs> Thank you. So this isn't, you don't feel like this is going to have an, a material impact on your finances. It's, it's not care. that kind of money. I don't care. No, but you said it's not, the, not about the money, but what, it could have a, a big positive financial impact on your business. Or no, or is the money amount, the money involved? Was that an answer? No. I think I think we I think we I think we hit this killed this horse several times over. I think we can move on. Okay, let's talk. Um, moving on. <laughs> let's talk about alternative accommodation, short-term rentals, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, according to uh, a report that the Wall Street Journal did um, in the fr in the first quarter, Airbnb actually did more room nights than Expedia. It's clearly growing. Um, Revenue growth was higher than, um, than your revenue growth, Expedia's revenue growth. Are we see, seeing a change in the, uh, the, uh, the pecking order of the leaders in online travel now? And where do you think the whole alternative accommodations business is, is heading? Yeah, look, uh, Airbnb is, a, is a, a good company. We differ on how to do things. I mentioned about the, uh, uh, the fee at the end. And you know, certainly we believe it's better to have everything instantly bookable. They do not, again, a customer experience for myself. And, um, you know, I've tried it out. And I, I don't like having to go back and forth with a host, back and forth, and from all done, I find out uh, a person doesn't want to actually rent it to me. I like our side, the booking.com way. Every single thing that is on our side, every single alternative accommodation, every home, condo, treehouse, everything, instantly bookable. When you press, I want it, you're done, all done, go get your thing. That's a difference. Um, we like the fact that on our site, you have all the different ways you can stay. You can stay in alternative accommodations, or you can stay in a hotel. And the thing is, displaying it on the same page, being able to see them all together, being able to see the prices, the reviews, because a lot of times when people come to our site, they're not yet sure which thing they really want. They want to look through everything. We think that makes it a better way to do the alternative accommodations. That being said, you know, Airbnb is a fine company that is growing very, very rapidly. And uh, hey, more power to them for having built a whole other industry for us. I, I ask this only uh, somewhat tongue in cheek, but it seems like the short term rental business is so complex that it almost makes the hotel business look like a cakewalk. Um, you have regulatory hassles, uh, the amount of uh, margin you make per booking on a short-term rental is smaller than on a hotel. Um, there, are few, there are fewer uh, units in a property uh, compared to the hotel industry. So um, how, do you, how do you view that? Yeah, no, I think most of what you said is pretty true. Um, for us, take rates are not that dissimilar, but the ADR is a little bit lower. So therefore, you're right. The, the actual what you're going to get out of the transaction is probably going to be a little bit lower. Um, the, everything you mentioned is right, and the costs of dealing with it can be significantly higher, particularly in the customer service and partner service thing where you're getting calls from both sides, whether it be the customer, can't find the key, you get it from the partner who wants to know they don't know how to load the rate. Lots of things like that ends up being a less profitable business. That's absolutely correct. And then, as you say, the fact that fewer rooms in each of these sites, and sometimes just one room, so you had to spend a lot more time going out and getting the supply, et cetera. Regulatory thing, very true, all those things. 
That, though, does not say that you shouldn't do it because the fact is people want to use it. If you're a family of four or family of five, family of six, and you say, gee, how many hotel rooms do I need? Or I can get one you know, house and I can put everybody there. Or you have small children and you like having a kitchen so you can use the breakfast for the kids in the morning. So there are lots of uses where it actually makes sense to do one of these alternative accommodations. That's why we're in it. It's growing faster than our you know, standard hotel business. We like that part. Um, I believe that there is significant future uh, ramp for this thing. It's going to continue to grow. Uh, and there's a reason that's because it's not a bad thing for certain uses. Speaking of ramp, what about tourism activities? You're doing a lot with that. Um, Get Your Guide, a tourism activities company, recently came out with a statement that uh, you know you guys own um, you guys own Fair Harbor, which is uh, connectivity software for tourism activities companies, and TripAdvisor owns Boken. It's really not a healthy development for the industry. How do you, what do you think about that? I've known Johannes for a very long time. I wasn't quite sure what he was saying at the time. I gotta, next time I see him, I'm going to ask him what he meant exactly. Look, we believe that uh, our connected trip, to be successful, has to provide all parts of the connected trip. And nobody has ever gone that I know of to a hotel and you visit a city and all you did was stay in your room. You want to do stuff. You want to go and do stuff, and you want to find ways to do it easily, frictionlessly. You want to do it with just one app. You want to do it where you don't have to put your credit card or your alternative payment method into the system again and again each time you want to buy something new, right? It's something that we believe is something that when we get our connected trip all complete, all tied out, it'll make the system so much easier, so much, just the benefits are so high, it'll build significant loyalty for us. Let's go to the videotape, I mean the audience questions. How does the new Marriott Expedia Group partnership change the OTA landscape? So what happened was uh, Marriott and uh, Expedia came up with a partnership where uh, bed banks, uh, if they want to um, access Marriott's wholesale rates, they have to go through Expedia. So how is that going to impact your company in terms of some of the what I called rogue rates getting out there on, on, on some of your meta search sites, on Agoda. What's your take on that? So it is an interesting change. We'll see what happens. So it, obviously, it doesn't change anything at all with any of our company's relationship with Marriott, which is a very good relationship at all. But it is, as you say, it deals with the way that rates are, are being distributed through these wholesalers that then gets put out instead of where it's supposed to go, which isn't a package or maybe an offline play or something like that, what's happening is somehow it gets from wholesaler to wholesaler, it ends up many times on a meta site as a deeply discounted price from what anybody uh, who is actually getting the rates legitimately can compete with. Which, of course, again, it's what it's doing is it's wrecking any type of yield management that uh, the hotel is trying to do. It's dealing with channel conflict. What we believe, what we really believe is that people obeying rules makes for a better business than not being, obeying the rules. So maybe this will uh, decrease the amount of that incredible discounting by, and I'll use your word, these rogue rates, uh, which would make, I think, better for the entire industry. Consumers like these row rates. Who doesn't but, like a low um, price? Who doesn't <laughs> like a low price, right? Um, what's your perspective on Google entering travel? They just recently started a uh, vacation rental business. I know Goda's uh, heavily participating in that. Um, Google partner or competitor or both, obviously? Google's been a fine, fine partner for a very, very long time. We've built our businesses symbiotically together, and we will continue to do so for a very long time. They continue to come up with new products, new ways to bring in customers, new ways to present information, which is, you know, their goal is to organize the world's information. That's what they're doing. And then what they do is they provide opportunities for people like us to put our brand there so somebody can click on it, and we can then pay Google a lot of money, which we do. It's win, win, win all around, because then somebody comes and books or something like that. Um, I am always in favor of, of being creative and innovative. That being said, and I've said this many times, we believe for our company, we want to continue to build our direct business as much as possible. And we are very pleased to be talking about the fact that more than half of our business is coming direct. We're also very happy to say the channel that is growing the fastest is our direct business. And also, I'm very happy to say that the 
channel that brings the most new bookers for us, a new customer for us, is also direct. So yes, I like the fact, it, look, if Google can get more people to come into Google, that's great, because then we can get more customers that way too. But I'm also very happy to be thinking what we want to do is build something that connected trip so great, so fantastic, like, for example, Amazon, that people go there first instead of going to any other site. I assure you, nobody in the world has ever gone to Google, well, ever, nobody recently has gone to Google, so then you can go to Amazon and buy some soap. No, you go to Amazon first. I want it to be so good, so great, that when you think of travel, of course you go to booking. When the boardroom door is closed and the lights are out, is the light, are the lights out in the boardroom? Um, who do you see as the bigger long-term threat to your business, Google or Airbnb? Well, I think they're two different things. One is a true, pure competitor. Right. One is an advertising platform that enables us to get customers. So really different ways to look at it. And now, if you told me if Google was out there being an OTA, then we'd have a different story, but they're not. They are not notate. They do not have thousands and thousands of people around the world calling on suppliers and developing relationships and rates. Look, it's all well and good to have a lot of people coming into your funnel at the top, but if you don't have the relationships with all the suppliers and getting that done right, it's going to be hard to be a true transactional basis business as opposed to a media business. But because of their foothold on search, they do cost you a lot of additional money that you otherwise wouldn't have to spend. The good thing about that, though, is we get to choose how much money we spend. And obviously, we look at what the ROIs are and what we're going to spend, and we come up with the, way it's the right way and how much. And would I like to spend less? Absolutely. Would every hotelier in the world prefer not to have to spend anything to us and everybody went to their hotels magically and just somehow showed up? Of course they would. That's not how business works. <laughs> Distribution is part of business. Glenn, we're out of time. <laughs> and